But there is a law of righteousness. And he said God, God wants us to live unto him. That the rights of the law might be fulfilled. But so often, we do not live in victory, we live in vanity. Because of the weakness of the flesh, the law could not make me free from the law of sin and death. The law can't do it. So what do you do? You say, I'm going to pray three times a day. And I'm going to put myself under the law. And I'm going to be a good Christian. I'm going to quit doing this. I'm going to quit doing that. Now let me say, make no provision for the flesh. But here's what we do. We start saying, God's going to be able to hear my prayers because I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to watch this. I'm not going to do this. And all of a sudden, we've got ourselves, put ourselves back under the law of sin and death and the law can't keep you free. The law could not do anything but bring condemnation. God did not say get saved and then live according to rules and regulations. Now you know I am all for dress standard. I am all for music standard. I'm all for men looking like men and girls looking like girls. Ladies looking like ladies, excuse me. I am all for that. But when you start saying Hey, I am going to grow my hair out this long as a lady so that I can be spiritual. And a man said, I'm going to keep my hair cut this short so I can be spiritual. You put yourself back under the law and the law has never done anything but break condemnation because what happens when COVID happens and all of a sudden the barber shops are closed. And you're not like me. You cannot just get your clippers out and clip it up every week. And all of a sudden your hair starts getting a little bit longer and you put yourself under the law. <laughs> the law could not do anything except for bring condemnation. All it does is show you that you failed. What happens when you say I'm going to read my Bible through every year so that I can be, because I'm spiritual. And then all of a sudden what happens? You get sick. And you lose your eyesight. And then you can't read your Bible through. You put yourself under the law. The law brings condemnation. Amen. But the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. The law brings about vanity. It's weak through the flesh. Not because the law is wrong. The law is good. But it's weak through the flesh. The law could not fulfill the law, could not fulfill righteousness in us. Right. It cannot make you righteous. Your obedience to the law might show that you are righteous, but it might just show that you're religious. Right. Right. Paul, according to the law, he was blameless. But something inside of him showed him that in me that is in my flesh was no good thing. Because of pride that was in him. Because he was such a good Pharisee of a Pharisee. A Hebrew of a Hebrew, excuse me, a Pharisee. According to the law, blameless. Right. Circumcised the eighth day of the tribe of Benjamin. I mean, he had everything going for him. So we just give you this thought. Examine. Number one. Your walk. For they that are after the flesh, verse 5, do not mind the things of the flesh. Or do mind the things of the flesh, excuse me. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Right. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Do not be carnally minded. Be spiritually minded. Asking God, 
God, would you lead me by your spirit, not lead me by your law, but lead me by your spirit. Amen. And you know what will happen? Yep. You'll find out you're dressing right. You'll find out as a rule you're listening to the right things, you're watching the right things. You'll be under conviction when you start going over here to go in the wrong direction. Right. And you'll have to make a willful choice to go in the wrong direction. You'll put something on and all of a sudden the Spirit of God say, don't wear that. You'll turn something on and the Spirit of God say, don't watch that. Amen. You'll do these things in the Spirit of God because you're walking in the Spirit. But to be carnally minded says, I deserve a break today. I deserve my free time. I heard these men say, I only get one day off of work a week. I need it. I, I deserve a break. Why would I go to church? I said, to get a break. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Have a good time. Enjoy the Lord. Enjoy the Spirit of God. Enjoy the people of God. What else could be better than that? Hallelujah. I asked them. But to be carnally minded, they start thinking, I need something to relax me. You know what they do? <laughs> they get their alcohol. They get their drugs. They get their whatever they want. I need something to relax me. Their cigarettes. And the next thing you know, they're addicted. <laughs> addicted to this stuff. And now they need something to take away that stress because now they can't quit. <laughs> because sin has a diminishing return. It always takes more and you always get less. Yes, sir. Amen. Until you're hooked so bad that it's all your life. Sin becomes your life. That's the calm. They say, I've got to have this. But to be carnally minded is dead. It never brings anything but dead. Never brings anything but destruction. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Said, I want to get in the Word of God. I want to do the will of God. I want to be in the ways of God. I want to do the work of God. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. I mean, do everything you do. By the Spirit of God, say, not so that you can establish your own righteousness, but because God is working you both willing to do of His good pleasure. Examine your walk. There's fruit unto death. We were in the flesh of Moses' sin. We were by the law that work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. There's a battle going on. Let me give you this other thought and I'm done. Ensure your position. If you are so carnally minded that you're saying, I'm going to prove to God that I can live for God. Yes. You ought to ensure your position. <coughs> Do you even know that He would done the good work in you? It's God who does the work. It's God. Would you yield yourself to Him? That is your sovereignty. You have the right to choose whether to yield or not. God's sovereignty says, I want to work. I want to work. I want to work. And when you say, I'll yield, God says, I'll work. I'll work. And I'll work. But what is your position? Are you in the flesh or in the spirit? Do you know God? I ask that question because of the fact that there's so much of this today of battling with the flesh and saying, I can do this and I can get victory and I can get victory and I can get victory instead of saying, dear God, I can't do it. I need Jesus. And then go back and say, oh, I'm going to try it again. And go back and say, 
go back and do the same thing. They told me the definition of insanity is do, continuously doing the same thing and thinking you're going to have a different result. <laughs> you ever thought about that? You say, I'm going to read through my Bible this year. Last year you got in there and you tried and all of a sudden, guess what happened? Something came up and you didn't make it quite through. <coughs> but you said, I'm going to do it this year. I want to start over again and do it. I'm never going to watch these things again. I'm never going to listen to that again. I'm never going to do that. These are all good things, but you put yourself under some bondage and don't walk in the Spirit. Guess what happens? You find yourself falling again. I'll not, oh, I'll keep my tongue, which is a little member of both of great things, from speaking evil of anybody. Amen. Then something happens, and you start speaking evil of them. You start speaking evil to somebody. And all of a sudden you find out, I, 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 I'll quit. I'll never do it again. You're keeping on trying to do this thing backward. The inward working of God is what gives us victory. Amen. Not the outward working of man. I was reading 2 Chronicles 29. The other day. And I noticed they started cleaning the temple. You know what they did? They cleaned it from the inside out. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because yeah. that's how God cleans it's his up. temple. From the inside out. <coughs> you know how you and I try to do it so often? From the outside in. Mm -hmm. We wash our hands, but don't wash our hearts. But it's not what goes in a man that follows a man. It's what comes out of man. We need a good old heart. We'll search and try and see if we need to wake away in man. And let us walk mm -hmm. after the Spirit. If you're in the Spirit. If you're in Christ. If you're in the flesh, you can try all you want to walk after the Spirit. Mm -hmm. But you'll never walk after the Spirit until you come to the end of saying. And you say, Dear God, save me. Are you saved? Are you sanctified? Set apart to Him. Let Him have His will in you. Let Him have His way with you. If you do, you'll be satisfied in the Spirit. Your flesh might not lie, but you'll have joy on speaking. Are you sad? Are you sad? Are you satisfied in the Spirit? Our Father, I pray in this.